I was. I think I did. Yeah, I think I was out doing some different things that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a meeting of the Town of Amherst Public Arts Commission, and today is May 16th. And I am not calling this meeting to order. My name is Angela Mills. I work for the town manager. I'm just here to start the meeting, and then I will turn it over to the wonderful chairs. Um, and they can make sure that they have quorum before they call the meeting to order. I just will say as a point of order that this meeting will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel probably um, in the next four or five days. And um, we're meeting remotely because of the wonderful governor extending all of the great suspension of open meeting laws that is so helpful. Um, before I go, June 30th, a couple of your members will be ending their terms on the commission. And so at some point, maybe during other items, you could discuss whether or not they would like to be reappointed. Okay. And that's my spiel for tonight. Would anyone like to be host? Okay. Thank you, Angela. Sure, I will make. Who is anyone sharing screens tonight? Who sh whom should I, I make the host? Um, uh, yeah, me. Okay, I'll make you the host. Thanks, Angela. Sure thing. Okay, so again, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so it's um, about six uh, five six oh six, and um, I just reset my clock to the wrong time. I see. Okay, but um, so call to order. Um, first, uh, first item would be to approve the um, the minutes that I sent, and these are from the April third meeting. The meeting that we had on the seventeenth is the one where it didn't get recorded. So uh, I'm. I'm going to go back and try to reconstruct that one from memory for us to review next time. I took some notes so if it's helpful, this, Tom. This set of um, minutes that I've sent you uh, is from the third. So please take a moment to look through it, see whether you spot anything that needs uh, changing. I read the minutes earlier. I didn't see anything that needed changing. Okay. Me either. I didn't see anything. Oh, but no. I wasn't at the meeting, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, can I have a, a, a motion to approve? So moved. And second? Thank you, Mikey. And quick show of hands for to pass the motion. Aye. Okay, aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I'll get those submitted to Angela for final posting. So, um, start with some updates <clears throat> on Electrify Amherst. Um, I need to get with Angela in the next few days about posting the call for artists. I think we have resolved uh, everything that we needed to do to get to uh, this point where we can post that call. Um, at the meeting on the 17th, we did choose three electric uh, traffic control boxes. Um, one of these is in front of Big Y. Another is um, um, on Route 116 south of Amherst College at, was it called Mill Valley down there, Robert? And, and then the third one is on Route 9 east of Amherst at the entrance to uh, Gatehouse Road, entrance to Echo Hill, uh, Echo Hill area. We uh, also agreed that we would like to see, we want to designate a theme, which would be the, the youth of Amherst. I think youth, we said. We went back and forth on, we had children first. I think we I think decided we, on youth. On youth. 
youth of Amherst. Celebrating youth, celebrating Amherst youth. Celebrating Amherst youth, thank you. Okay, so those, those are the fundamentals of the, of the call. And uh, so the idea would be to give, give people a, uh, a month or six weeks to formulate proposals and then give ourselves a month to select three and then get back in touch with the artists to let them know and, um, and then get on with the painting, the actual painting of the boxes in September, October most likely on the pattern that we've done before. And meanwhile, I have a note in August to get back to uh, Public Works to ask about the prep on the boxes that, that, we need to, that we need to do and any last minute suggestions or requirements that they have. Uh, just remind everyone that uh, we did re review the selection of boxes with public works, so we're not going to paint a box that they're about to tear down um, or replace with a traffic circle. We were warned off on at least one one of those. So um, so that's that's where we are on, on Electrify Amherst. Um, I, I'm going through this because I realized that not everybody was at the last meeting. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, um, next up, um, update is on a percent for art and there's absolutely nothing haven't heard a word back from the town manager after the second memo that i sent you know it was following the april 17th meeting where we filled out um, profiles of seven people or positions to uh, serve on the advisory committee for that and pass along two recommended names, nominations uh, for the committee. Also um, reiterated some things from the first memo, such as a mur mural seemed to be uh, a, an obvious thing to us, but also the possibility of some kind of 3D work that would either be inside the school or right in front of it, perhaps. Um, and did not go into a great deal of detail there. I would think that, uh, you know, we didn't, we wouldn't want to, I think it's the sense of the commission that we didn't want to get too specific there and that uh, other people needed to participate, notably this advisory committee there. Um, Little side note here, um, Jim isn't able to be at the meeting here, but for those of you who do, did attend the last meeting, we had this kind of otherworldly experience where Jim and I had differing versions of the bylaw for the percent for art. And he and I talked after the meeting and he sent me a copy of what he had. And the one that he had was dated uh, 2017 and uh, had all the official trappings on it, certifying that this was a, you know, a voted item and a true copy, et cetera, et cetera. Had the town seal on it and everything. But it is different from the bylaw that appears on the town's website. I did a little looking around and the first time the bylaw appeared on the website was in January of 2020, which was, you know, about three years after it appeared to have been passed and, and everything. And um, so that, that version that's there from in 2020 and repeated each year with the update to the bylaws so that it's current in 2023, those have all been identical. There's no change. But here's what's interesting. There is an important, there are some important differences between the 2017 version and what has appeared publicly. The main uh, difference there, well, the first obvious easy difference 
was the original threshold amount was $100,000. Hmm. It then got moved up to a million <laughs> in what was published. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I guess things cost more. Um, <laughs> Inflation. <laughs> Inflation. But uh, here's, here's, the, here's the critical thing. Um, under the 2017 version, the money that uh, was to come out of the project in question was to go into a kitty, not the official term, but was to go into a fund to be administered by um, the Public Arts Commission. And th along with that, there was not, a, not precise wording about what to do with the money. It, the, 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 the wording in 2017 says to, um, you know, to provide uh, for public art in, in the town buildings. And I guess the implication was, well, we're talking about the building who's paying for the project, but it doesn't say that. Huh. In the 2020 version, it darn right does say that, that it's limited to that building. Furthermore, the money does not go, does not go into a fund that APAC manages. It stays in the project budget. And again, another difference in 2017, any money left over after building that artwork remains in APAC's budget and can oh. be used for anything. In the 2020 version, 2020 and, and since um, any remaining money after the artwork is built, pr produced, created, uh, goes right back to the funding sources. It does, it does not carry over. So basically uh, the original uh, percent for art is sort of the, you know, the ship coming in for APAC. Hey, we're funded. We've got stuff we can work with, but but it got changed somehow, so that now it's it's very strictly limited to the building in question and to the artwork in question, and there's nothing nothing left after that. So, Tom, wouldn't this be something that we could find in the minutes of town meeting or like? I've been looking and cannot find it because that and should Jim... be easily searchable right like by motions and votes because that well, would have to be voted on i would think that would have to be voted on by the town council i'll have to go through i have to go through the all of this the the council minutes to see that but is there I an easier through, way to do that is there a, i was, was going to suggest might it be easier just to contact either the, the clerk or the, the town attorney they might be able to yeah, you know, I think that's what you have, have to do all and this. Or, or yeah. the people that used to be on APAC, like I would contact Amy Crawley. But we need, well, we need the actual to town records. I was on APAC at need, the time. So we need official word on okay. this. So okay. I would yeah, we need something official time. here. Okay. Um, but, and you know, Jim told me that he was he was really surprised because he said he had enough involvement in town council and APAC through those years that he would have expected to have heard that this was happening. Anyhow, so this is really not 100% um, applicable to what we're working on now, but it, I think it's a very important piece of background. And I, for one, I think I sense you agree with me that you all agree with me that We'd really like to get to the bottom of this because uh, I think it has some pretty severe Im implications for understanding, you know, the town's commitment or not, or lack of commitment to public art uh, and to our commission in particular. Robert, did you have any other insights about that? No, uh, other than mm -hmm. I think trying to get uh information from the horse's mouth as it were 
you know, either yeah. so, somebody fairly high up uh, in town mm -hmm. uh, should know what what the actual uh, mechanics of this are. Okay. Yeah, I think I think uh, that's right. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, when I read the packet that was about the uh, percent for art, there's a sheet that lists the two, August 26, 2019 town council vote to establish the percent for art bylaw ad hoc committee. And it lists uh, Kathy Shane, uh, Councillor Schreiber, Councillor Steinberg, James Barnhill, and William Kazan who was the chair of APAC three years ago. You all have the same thing, don't you? Yeah, so, and it says, um, in, in a number of things after the list of people on the committee, the focus of the percent for art bylaw ad hoc committee shall be to update and revise the percent for art bylaw passed by town meeting in spring 2017. Okay, so there's that's that's some breadcrumbs for us to follow. Yeah, and um, it says specifically to the percent bylaw ad hoc committee shall revise the previous bylaw to address concerns identified by the Massachusetts legislature, clarify definitions respond to questions or concerns raised by council committees and propose a revised version of the bylaw for consideration by the Community Resources Committee and Finance Committee. Okay. So okay, I, think that, and I think you have that. If you want, I can scan it and send it to you. Mm -hmm. I do recall seeing that now that you, now that you bring it up, yeah. Yeah, so, so there's up. a lot. Some stuff was going on, but we are not uh, told what it is. You know, mm -hmm. we haven't been communicated. And it goes on to talk about other detail, real specific things that came up. But, you know, it tells you that concerns were identified by the legislature, but it doesn't tell you what the concerns are. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, it's not, maybe it does give you some help. Yeah. But not specific mm -hmm. yeah okay. that gives and us a I lot think, i would think james would know something about it because he's pretty meticulous about keeping track of things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay just jotting some notes on that yeah i think speaking to the clerk of court would probably be a, a good idea find out what happened there Mm -hmm. I'm to see who that is. Who is the clerk? Clerk's office. Yeah, they were supposed to file their report to the uh, Finance Committee and the Resources Committee on October 31st, 2019. And to the town okay. council by November 30th, 2019. Okay, then that that would be that would be just a month or two before the bylaw was published in January of 2020. So they did complete their work. Okay. Division. Yeah. Okay. Of course, that also re raises the question, uh, mostly moot now, I suppose, but. Uh, was the percent should the percent for art have applied to the library project and to the uh north north commons the um, renovation which is just wrapping up now mm. yeah, but, I don't uh, know. this is the the elementary school is the first time the the town is is activating the percent for art uh, bylaw. Mm -hmm. All right. So the town clerk is Amber Martin. There's a Susan Audette. I'm sorry. Susan Audette. And we can ask her, um, you know, she can give us the public records we're looking for. Okay. That is her job. 
to mm -hmm. the highest possible level of transparency, et cetera. So. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Thank you all. This is very, very helpful. I want to find out what's going on there. That's really confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they did leave in the wording of the bylaw. There was no, no change to the list of responsibilities, which is, which now reads rather strangely, because it essentially has APAC, you know, dis deciding on disbursement of funds, and essentially on project management, but if effectively that's been taken out of our hands hmm. and uh, so that would maybe a little bit um a little a little bit odd that you know some of the core items were changed but they never went through and followed followed through on all that so it's a little confusing as to what we're supposed to do other than give give some advice to the town manager Okay. All right. All right. Um, last update that I have was that um, about a week ago, I had uh, a hour meeting with Liz Larson, who is the interim director of the Business Improvement District. And uh, let me look at the summary notes I made from that. Um, she is working, she has this, one of her major projects, the, um, the, the restoration of the art walk, the monthly evening when the art galleries uh, are open. She's confident that that can happen starting in September. She has an intern working this summer with the various businesses to, uh, to get that organized. Uh, I told her that, uh, that that APAC, that the sense of APAC was that we'd really like to see that happen. And I told her that if she if she or her intern could use some extra extra help, I'd be glad they could call on me for that. Um, secondly, um, Liz says she is trying to revive the Amherst Center Cultural District uh, organization and that she would like uh, APAC to be a member of that. And I told her, yes, definitely, we, we, would like to, we would like to do that. So I'll watch to see. Uh, I, I gathered from the conversation that she was thinking that was just weeks away from being reconvened. I saw she sent some email to other um, participants trying Trying to trying to get that work organized, bring that group back together. Uh, at that stage, uh, just a heads up for for you all, we would probably want to select somebody from the from this commission from the group here to uh, to attend those meetings to represent APAC there. Um, and uh, lastly, Liz said that she is. Um, about to start working on plans for the uh, U.S. Um, two hundred and fiftieth celebration, United States semi cinquentennial, semi cinquentennial. Uh -huh. Easy we're for you. On, so we're working on that in Arlington right now because Arlington is okay. working with you know Concord and everything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, I asked Terry had Terry had sprung that question on Paul Bockelman. Yeah, and he meeting. was like, "What? What?" <laughs> Like, um, we should probably yeah. do something You're like, ah, yeah. So, so, um, so I told her that, um, yes, you know, that's a great conversation to get started and that, um, we would be happy to sort of look at the public art aspect of that. I think if we look back to the, was it the 200th anniversary for the town of Amherst? Uh, there were some there were some public art activities uh, there, and uh, we can look back to those as sort of examples of, you know, it wasn't things that APAC funded. Well, one of them, for example, was that illumination of one of the tobacco barns. Remember that? 
and it was documented by photographers. So in not to get ahead of us, but in my definition of things, that's a public art thing. Um, but we didn't have to, you know, we didn't, we were just one of a number of friendly or cooperating, co-sponsoring uh, entities for that. So oh, I also suggested to Liz that she take a look at what uh, they're doing over across the river in Florence, Haydenville, and Williamsburg to commemorate the great flood of 1874. That's the uh, front page of the, at the Gazette, I think, today. Um, and I find it interesting because they're, they've got everything from, um, you know, sort of museum and archives materials and awareness and activities and excess to uh, some actual live events. So for one thing, they're planning to ring church bells in series all the way down from where the dam was into Northampton. And they're going to record that, that, that sequence there. And there's going to be, there will be all kinds of, you know, live events for people to attend all everything you know from the usual face painting and and stuff to uh, um, you know uh, pu public public talks and who knows what what else it's 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 notably sort of multi multimodal in the things that they're looking at everything from you know a fresh public event to a serious look at um, at, dark, at at archives and everything in between. So I said, well, you know, not not to do the same thing, but you know, let's look, take a look, and see. There's some nice creativity uh, uh, going on over there. Dara, the the tolling of the bells timing is a quite a good thing that they spent time figuring out. And I think if you heard it, if you could hear it all live as it moves through the area, it'd be pretty moving. And oh yeah. Yeah. And gra grave, you know, serious thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I just love the, I just love the, the, the freshness and creativity of a thought like that. Uh, yeah. Cause when we, when we look at historic events and such, we, it's, we off, we often make it too dry and uninvolving. Okay. So those are the, those are the updates and, um are there before we get into the main agenda item here are there any other uh questions or suggestions that people would like to make on just about anything okay i can tell you're all real real eager to move on into the d definition of public art all right so this is the the, the idea here is to take a, take a fresh look at sort of the mission and policies, charter, whatever you'd want to call it, you know, for the um, Public Art Commission. And if we wanted to take a look at, all right, what, what exists uh, so far on this, I'm going to try to share my okay. okay is that showing public art commission on your on your screens? Not mine. Not yours? Hmm. Sharing screen is always so tricky. Yeah, I do it just infrequently enough to forget each time. Let's 
Okay, how about this? Trying to show the the web uh, the web page. Yeah, I see it now. Okay, all right, good. I am right, not so it. I will I will figure out why. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll figure it out. You go go right ahead, please. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so. The paragraph here under, under the word mission, uh, from from all the stuff I've looked through over the, you know, the records in past years, this this is actually pretty, a pretty fair condensation of the various um, purposes and responsibilities uh, that have been listed. So I think it is, uh, in addition to being current. I, I think it is a good starting point uh, for our discussion. Now, I'll s say first that nowhere in, in this paragraph is public art defined. And um, I, I think we'll see that, that that in itself is something of an issue. The, the general charge up here to foster greater community awareness of the interaction with public art I've got no idea what that means. You know, whose interaction? Um, you know, what, what's that getting at other than to uh, promote or foster awareness of public art itself, maybe? And through public art, promote cultural diversity. Okay, can understand that. And an improved quality of life for Amherst citizens. All right, that sounds good but how would you assess whether you're actually doing it? Um, you know, not obvious. Then it, second, second part of this is a listing of so-called responsibilities. And so to, li to list them, it says developing guidelines for public art, proposing to the town manager and town council an annual budget, which we've not been doing, seeking funding sources for public art, um, which we've not really been doing either, uh, encouraging the integration of art in public and private development. On um, public development, all right, we've got the percent for art. Um, private development, I'm not aware of anything we've done or even what that would consist of. Um, interacting with all town boards. Well, I'm going to presume that that means with regard to public art. So, for example, making sure that uh, public works um, gets in on the deliberations as appropriate, such as for the traffic, uh, traffic boxes. Uh, serving as a resource in educating developers officials and communities about possibilities for public art. Okay, so that's kind of an advocacy and, well, educational um, charge. Uh, and developing policies for public, publicly owned works in Amherst. And hey, Tom, was this updated recently? No. I remember the first paragraph being there. I'm not... I'm not remembering the second paragraph being there. Well, um, this this is what's this far, well what's recently. Um, this is this has not changed uh, since you know in the last year, um, and the wording, as I said before, the wording does seem very consistent with. Um, statements that have appeared in various other places, such as in the bylaw and the percent for art. Now, what this statement does not include is it doesn't say anything about the, the town hall art gallery. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about what relationship we have with uh, the Cultural Council. So I think um, I think there are things that it, it also leaves 
you know, unaddressed. So I've, I've gone through this a number of times, as you can tell from my sort of editorial comments uh, on it, um, been a little bit perplexed. Um, about it, we're trying to clean up here a bit. I wanted to mention that the first paragraph of this leaves a lot of, it's a lot of vague language, which gives you lots of wiggle room um, commission to commission to figure out what your missions and goals are. I think I honestly kind of, I like that approach because every commission mm -hmm. is different and I don't like the idea of being told exactly what we should be doing. That thing should be evolving and changing as the commission changes. But um, as to the second part of that, um, that's pretty specific. And I feel like we really haven't looked at that a whole lot. So that's, this is interesting yeah. to do that. And yeah. if you look at, if you look at other pages on the website, there's like, uh, about the board mm -hmm. uh, on that page, it just, not that one, the next one, uh, on the public art commission page, it has the commission overview which is just that first part, the first sentence, foster a greater community awareness with the interaction of public art through public art, promote cultural diversity and improve quality of life. And that's the kind of one that I see more often. I don't really mm -hmm. see this com this mi mission very often. So that's really interesting to me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it pretty specifically says what our charge is. Um, the first part is vague, the second part is not. I think it's yeah. probably, I'm speculating, but maybe the people who invented the mission language, as you said, left it vague so that it can be used in various ways. And the second part is saying, and these are the things to be done in order for the mission to be yeah. accomplished. Right. Yeah. I would like to focus more on those things because they are very concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I they're all, by and large, things we've never done, as far as I can tell. So I have tried to ask for a budget from our town manager, and he told me that that's not really something that the Art Commission does, that if mm -hmm. we need money, we um, petition him directly as an individual, I think he said. Um, we don't go to the to the finance committee and ask for a right. budget, which I found really interesting, because that's what we do in Arlington. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why there was a difference. Um mm -hmm. But I, I just assume that things are just different here. We did change from a town meeting system to a, to this system we have now. Is it, it has been relatively recent, right? 2018, I think, was a change. Is that Mikey? I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're still kind of new, right? Yeah. Well, well the, the, the commission has gotten funds from cultural council grants. Right. Yeah. Right. But not from right. the town. The, no. I don't but think that that would be considered the town at no, least in terms no, of no not really the mass committee. culture council is from the state no i don't know where the money comes from okay but oh. it's, well, it's the money is is um used by the town and by choice of how the town chooses to use it that's not the mass cultural council that's the other it's the um what's it called the one I'll remember. Hold on. The Mass Cultural Council funds the local cultural councils all over the state. Right. Yeah. But it's yeah. the local yeah. chapters of those councils that decide how the money's used. Yes. So that would be considered the town. Because we're a commission of the town. They're a commit they're part of the town. So they could count. I'm just saying in terms of language, they could count it as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there were um, public art projects in the past that were not, that were funded by the town as opposed to um, the, the cultural council. So for example, when the parking garage was built and the poetry boxes were done, yeah. I don't, I don't believe that that was um, ACC funding, but I've not been able to figure <laughs> out whether that was just sort of a one-off thing. Uh, it doesn't appear to have followed any 
you know, pre-existing guidelines for when and why and how, you know, public art gets funded. So, Thomas, what are you suggesting that we do about the wording of that document you were sharing? Well, um, I, my hunch was is to start is to go back, and and take a look at what what definition we want or definitions we want to apply to public art, and then try to follow some cases based on that. Now, I'll give you a, a couple of examples and trying to, um, you know, elucidate why why I think the definition is is the good place to start. Um, okay, we got our our old warhorse here, the uh, uh, for want of a nail, and <laughs> raise the question: How does how does something how does something get to be designated and endorsed uh, as public art? Yeah. Right. So that starts as a private, um, uh, you know, a, a private vision. But how many of these, how many other things in the history of public art in Amherst? You know, have done that and what might we want to do about building a pathway so that somebody who does have an idea doesn't have to wait for uh, the public art commission to put out a call for artists but can float an idea and maybe eventually it does become public art and so what role how do, how do we see what we do what how do we see our responsibilities uh, and our latitude of uh, action and judgment uh, mm -hmm. in the light of of, uh, of a, of a I scenario that, like I think that we would be advisory in that predicament I mean, if yeah. we had that scenario according to these mm -hmm. um, serve as a resource wait 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 what is where is it um, integration of art in public and private development encouraging so it wouldn't be that we fund it it would be maybe that we uh mm -hmm. encourage counsel advise that you know what yeah. i mean that would be a soliciting mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be a project management mm -hmm. but that would be more of a uh, information sharing mm -hmm. um sh sharing resources kind of thing maybe i'm not sure but yeah well it's, I a, think really, it's a really interesting case and it is it brings me right back to for want of a nail because that was a private yeah project that we didn't have any pathway to decide what to do with and so we were kind of mystified yeah. and yeah. i'd like to not be in that predicament for the next one what's the status on that i miss that ultimate status what happened with it okay well we we wrote back to her to say that uh, apac was not endorsing her suggestion okay. and you know she she wrote back uh an email saying, you know, thank you for explaining, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I would like to know uh, how'd she put this? She, she's essentially asking, what is the pathway? And I, t I wrote back and said, hey, we're working on that. Get back to you. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Have you now, all, has everybody had a chance to look at that space? Yeah. To look at what? The space that she proposes to put that piece that she's had designed and or, or designed mm -hmm. and had built. Yeah. It's so it's such a tiny space. Yeah. And they just put it they just put a tree in it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think anybody has really studied the effect that the piece of art in that little space would have on traffic, mm -hmm. yeah. on all well, here's kinds of things. Yeah, well, here's this. I think I, I think what your I think your observations here point back to what Terry is saying, and I yeah. think 
the advice would be, hey, somebody's got to talk to, you know, I've forgotten now, is it Planning Commission or uh, Public Works for, for one, or the design, uh, what, uh, design, thank yeah. you, the Design yeah. Bureau. Yep. Yeah, to say, you know, to rather than us as yeah. amateurs shouldn't be the arbiters in the honorable sense. sense of that word trying to become arbiters of that and also um, so i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead mikey um also the historic commission would be good to have yeah. them talk to yep yeah yeah, be a yeah. Part of so circling back to terry's suggestion um one thing that's occurred to me and i think uh um, I, I certainly plan now to to pursue in, in some detail is to, would be to work backwards from the artist's contract that the town issues when there's an authorized public work. And you can make a checklist from it. And that could be something we could use with a with somebody who's going to propose something. To say, you know, have you have you looked at this? The town will want to know uh, these details going through the going through the checklist, and then if it's you know we could maybe help them with some parts of it. So, for example, if if it seems that uh, public works needs to be consulted on that, we can pick it up and sort of uh, forward it to them. And ask their ask their advice on it. They were very very good, very very good on the on the traffic boxes, getting back within hours for everything that I asked and and more. So I think if we were to say, look, here's somebody who's proposing to do this on this site, and this is what we know so far. What do you think? Questions? You want to talk with them? You you want to you want to give us some questions to take back to them? I think we can do that sort of thing so that we're providing um, process, but more importantly, we're providing some real assistance to both the artists and to the town to make this easier. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that's that, that's a way that we can do this. The second point, and Terry, what you said, were saying points to this. This is my second example, and this has just come up. Um, the, I got an email from the director of the Bangs Center, and she's been talking with an art professor at Amherst College who is going to be teaching a course in public art next fall. And her plan is that her students will do a mural in the Bangs Center, and they have a whole interesting process they're starting to figure out where the students are going to interview um clients of the of, of the bang center to to sort of learn what it is how it works what it feels like how people feel about it and that this will shape their conception of the artwork that they do and so the 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 bang center director you know at least you know kudos to her she she thought to approach or somebody recommended that she approach the public art uh, art commission i'll gather up and send to you the 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 emails that have gone back and forth she just uh just this afternoon out of the blue sent me an email saying did you see have you have you had a chance to look at the proposal well the proposal was just her quick outline a few weeks ago you know about roughly what they were thinking to do so mm -hmm. i'm i'm now thinking through my response, which is likely to be something to the effect, um, you know, politely saying that's not a proposal for one thing, and say, but but it sounds it sounds like a a project worth, you know, worth carrying forward, and here's how I think we can help. So, you know, there's this advice which we've been talking about here about what how can we how can we how can we set up a path so that the right kinds of thinking and consultation and back and forth and checking all happens uh, at the formative stages and not as a veto 
at the end. Uh, and it also yeah. occurs to me that, and I'll, I'll stop talking in a second uh, here, but um, there's maybe a pivotal moment in that project when the class, the Amherst College class decides what they're going to draw. How, what's the topic? How big is it? Where's it going to be? And at that stage, that feels to me like the time for an artist's contract with the town. And that, that's, I think that's the good place to get all these things pinned down. And, re, and the artist's contract includes addressing things like uh, intellectual property ownership. And the town graciously concedes that to the artists uh, routinely in these contracts. But it also wants to know about reproduction rights. In other words, can you use it in posters and and uh, brochures and things? So the, the, the whole train of things like that 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 uh, that the town has the town's legal department has has you know figured out to it fairly well, and I think we can work backwards from that and help uh, help. Uh, um, you know, help things become public art and, and without, um, you know, without nasty surprises. Yeah, I think that's a good long-term project is to develop the actual policy, you know, and, yeah. and the pathway, like you talked mm -hmm. about. I think that's well, if, a really nice, a really good endeavor for the town. But, yeah, and if we don't do that, it's not really being public art. Yeah. And if you don't if you don't have a policy that says this is where we put out calls for mm -hmm. if you it anybody who's teaching a class can come up with a good project that mm -hmm. can be made public in the course of their, you know, whatever syllabus mm -hmm. they make up mm -hmm. and whatever projects they make up. But all the other people who could participate in something like that didn't even know there was a chance or opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you need to have this stuff figured out. And in my experience, I did not see that the commission for a long time had any kind of policy. Right, right. Of, of almost any kind. And you ask questions mm -hmm. about how it worked this way or what worked that way. It's always vague. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it makes it really hard to... Yeah. A, a, you know, I, I'd like us all to be able to take a one-day seminar on public art by some real amazing person who could talk about it. Mm. You know, it would clear mm -hmm. up a lot of issues and help yeah. like, make yeah. the playing field brand new because it needs to be, It the commission needs to decide what it is. And I, I don't think that that's clear at really. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't think just being an advisory committee is going to get you much Mm -hmm. people are not going to care about that that much right right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's kind of sad but i don't know but yeah. it would take a lot of work to make a real effort to give it a, a little bit of uh real not clout but actual presence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's hard because there's a big difference between public art and private art. And private meaning one individual person's vision of some piece of art that they want to make. And what is the public vision of art that everybody in a community is seeing and it is paid for and supported by the, your tax money and your belief yeah. in your town? Yeah. So well, we also. And we have to we have to make the tent big enough here in a yeah. way because we we have the you know, so if we take a public a definition of public art um, how, how does that help us understand the town gallery the art there is uh, private creation yeah um, yet we. We, we address it under the public art tent here. We have a place for it. And that goes to a different aspect of I've seen of definition of, of public versus private art. 
Private art is what you or I make or buy and hang on a wall at home. And nobody gets to see it unless we invite them in. So that's yep. private. We take, um, you take somebody's um, 15 paintings and you put them up in town hall and you do not charge admission <laughs> or, or demand, per, have to ask permission to see them. Yep. There. So. That's all good points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, wonder I, if in, I wonder if in the past, the reason they did that was to raise money for the Public Arts Commission. They because did charge. there used to be a fee. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of money, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> I know, but... But it was but a fee for the artist, right? Uh, it wasn't... Who paid the fee? The artist. Right. So that seems to be undermining... <laughs> Uh, I know, I, I know, but this is the information I got. Almost like renting it, right, Robert? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so, yeah, no, that's an interesting yeah. funding model um, yeah. on the backs of the people who are trying to support it. I always thought the same. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think the, you know, when I, when I, when I look at the gallery there, and look at the experience there and think in particular about uh, our most recent artist. Uh, so here you have um, a, a woman who during COVID gets this idea to pick up painting. She'd always wanted to, never had training, et cetera, et cetera. Um, has some success, her friends encourage her she finds her way to apply to display her paintings. We accept uh, at the uh, uh, artist reception. She has about 30 friends show up. They are wowed. She sells a couple of the works. Yep. There. You And those of us who saw her and were at the reception, you just see her glowing. This was it, a transformative that felt thing. really good to me. beautiful to yeah. see yeah. and she she wrote uh she wrote to mikey and me uh just recently she said oh and by the way my parents came from out of town to see the exhibit you know yes. and, yes. and uh, all right That's so we throw you know the, the the cherry on top of the sunday here uh, you know she planted this at the outset she said you know i'm a i'm i'm a hispanic woman trying to find trying to find my way in art. Yep. And we ended up giving her tremendous validation there. So I think that contributed. Again, it's it's this tricky zone here because she's a private artist. Um, but yet we were, you know, we were um, pulling the oars here for, for diversity, for a number of, you know, for just for the, the also the promotion of this model of you know step forward and um you know be be recognized i i'll bet she never ever ever thought that she would go to a private gallery with with a box full of paintings and saying hey would you like to show these all right so long-winded at the end of our our hour here robert yeah quick comment so not in any way to undermine the value of the gallery at town hall but you know the, the point you're making is also the, the case that the people who attended that opening you said 30 of her friends i'm guessing most of the people who attended had some relationship to the artist you know i i think about you know public art and i'm I'm okay with a fairly vague definition of public art. I think, you know, the the, the more we try to have a very specific definition, I, I think we're going to lose the mm -hmm. point, you know. Um, so, but, you know, the, the public piece of it, uh, I guess the problem I have with the town hall gallery is that it doesn't feel very public in the sense of uh, helping public art to create space in town. In other mm -hmm. words, 
you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a sculpture in a certain spot or, um, you know, some mural, something that is part of, uh, you know, helping to define a space, I think helping or, or exists so that anyone, whether they know it's there or not, can come upon it. I mean, if you, you have to know that there's a gallery opening at the Town Hall Gallery. You're not just going to mm -hmm. casually pass by, you know, getting out of your car in a parking lot and walking to, to a restaurant in town. You're not just going to pass by and, and see that the way you would with uh, a mural or a sculpture or rounding a corner and finding some unexpected piece of art, you know, which I, so I, I think, you know, I would love it if, if there were funding, of course, because um, someone would own the building, presumably, but um, in an empty storefront, you know, that to yeah. me would be a great yeah. place for the Amherst Public Art Commission gallery, because then mm -hmm. you, know, you have street mm -hmm. access so that anyone walking by could look in and say, oh, you know, there's a bunch of mm -hmm. art in there. I wonder what that is. And they would be likely, if interested in art, to stop in, you know, and, and that would attract people other than those who already know there's a gallery of things going on. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so and then just getting to the definition of public art too. You know, I, I just feel like we, the commission needs to involve the public more. I think the idea that, mm -hmm. you know, five or six people who have volunteered for this commission to, you know, set the course for what public art should be in the town. I, I, I don't, again, I, I feel like that's at odds with what I think most of us think about as public art, you know? And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, this professor at Amherst College, I'm sure there are other professors at the other five colleges. We have art teachers at the schools, you know, we have artists in the community, we have people who yeah. just appreciate art, you know, it seems like there, there's got to be a way to engage the public in helping to define or at least give opinions on what what public art that's in town uh, moves them, what they feel engaged with, what they mm -hmm. don't feel engaged with. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, as as lovely as the conversation is, it, it often feels like when public art's mentioned in Amherst, it's followed immediately by, you know, Emily Dickinson and Robert Frost, which mm -hmm. yeah, it's great. And we're obviously proud uh, of that association, but there is a lot more and a lot more people of all sorts of cultural backgrounds, um, you know, who are not, necessarily represented by mm. although mm. certainly great poets speak to people of all cultures so, you know I, I just think there's there's a lot more that um, a lot more engagement with the public that I think yeah I think Emily Dickinson's pretty well taken care of yeah, yeah, I think we're good there. <laughs> Although, you know, now that we know that Taylor Swift is somehow related, I think Taylor <laughs> Swift to town for a fundraiser yeah. on the common, I think we we're, we're, we're might work on that. We should lean into that association. <laughs> Some really good conversations here, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Any, any final comments? Final in the sense as looking against the clock, not... Uh, uh, not the topic. Here, I would love but, to uh, and find some kind of an advisory council, kind of as Robert suggests, and getting more, um, mm -hmm. getting more input from the from yeah. our constituents. You know that is, and I'm not really sure how to do that. That's the that's the hard mm -hmm. part. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if anyone can maybe we do a little brainstorming and think of ways that we can engage the public and 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 helping us to, um, you know, define ourselves better and you know, find what our purpose is. I think as Robert was talking, I think that would be really mm -hmm. yeah. good work. I, I like, um, I think it was Dara suggested uh, maybe if we could find a real 
um, a really good person to speak to us about. I think that would be worth looking to see, looking around to see who are the leading lights. Um, Darrow, going back to your suggestion about finding, um, you know, a brilliant speaker to, uh, to, to help us out. There may even be something out there on YouTube. Who knows? Mikey's got some good ideas for that too. Yeah. For local people who are, you know. Yeah. And I don't, and I don't, I agree with Robert's idea that it shouldn't be too specific because it has to be big enough to include all kinds of ways of, meaning what yeah. you want to mean by public art i don't i don't mean that you're you're going to have a rule book that ticks yeah. off a few things that calls it mm -hmm. makes it what it want to call it it's not, mm -hmm. art's not that easy to tame yeah right yeah no I, I agree i agree and at the, you know what uh i want to avoid painting myself as too much of a bureaucrat which of course was my career but um, but <clears throat> where I'm interested in in the rules and the checklists and things comes to be like, all right, you want to put this sculpture up? Have you have you gotten permission from town council, yeah. or has uh, has somebody looked at this to make sure it's not going to become a danger to children? You know that level of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think, and I think the 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 val the 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 virtue in the uh, breadth that we allow in the definition is that we don't want to get caught short because oh gee we never thought of that I and mean, we now we don't know what to do mm -hmm. so you know my, my one of my favorite public art things and I I wish I could get to Italy to see this those daytime fireworks i don't know if you've seen those it's like painting in the sky huh. and it's a it's a combination oh, yeah. of old uh old italian yep. uh culture and pyrotechnics and chinese the latest uh, the great practitioner of it um currently is is chinese and it's gorgeous but it costs who knows hundreds of thousands of dollars so we're not going to do it and at <laughs> last at last for 20 seconds <laughs> so uh, we have we have to answer to whether we thought that was a good use of public money yeah but if somebody I came think, to us we... yeah if somebody came to us but, and wanted to do that i wouldn't want to be sitting there thinking uh oh we never thought of this well and the town do do a pretty big fireworks thing every year all, all the little towns around here do fireworks don't they yeah, I think that's Chamber of Commerce uh, funds that. And it's Commerce. Come out at U UMass, yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Any last um, wisdom, comments for the good of the order? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, I'll make sure that this recording doesn't get well, lost. Um, Angela mentioned the people that are up for um renewal yes yeah. yeah we need to talk about that's that. that's dara and robert mm -hmm. yeah so um you want to be thinking about whether you would like to continue um from angela's email to me uh it was you know could i find out whether you know you you guys would like to continue i think it implied that you could be fired but uh i think it's more <laughs> More no. a question of, uh, <laughs> but that would be that would be for for um, uh, negligence with neither of you. Did. Neither of you. What's that? Oh, Susan, I said I, that would be very fun. I'm happy to stay on because okay. I think there's a possibility that some big transitions will happen, mm -hmm. and it's nice to see that happening. So I'm happy to stick around. Thank you, Dara. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to hear your your interest there because of the very nice contributions you've made all through. Okay. All right, we're going to um I'm going to um break Robert's rules and just declare that that we are uh oh, we are let's make a motion. I make a motion to uh end our meeting. Okay. I second. We're, okay. All in favor. And the vote. 
favor. That wasn't so awesome. hard. Awesome. Thank you all so much. It's good to see you. Yeah. Okay. Take okay. care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.